we're live. And we're <laughs> live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our broadcast. Today is about uh, the old cashless society. We've, in New Zealand, we've discussed this over a lot of times over the last, I don't know, since FPOS came in way back in what? Was it 80s, 90s, Rico? Um, oh, geez, I don't know. They've been around as long as I've been. <laughs> I remember being a kid and having FPOS cards there. So. Must be yeah. the 80s. Gotta be 80s. Pretty, pretty much, pretty 80, early 80s. We were, um, we were, for when it comes to F post and all that stuff, we were like the the guinea pigs for the rest of the world, as we always are, on how to um, deal with your uh, with a small society, trial everything out, and see how people react to it. And um, you know, uh, the reason I brought this topic up today, um, we'll, we'll have Jared, our financial risk advisor, come on soon. He's just running a bit late, but I don't want to lose our stream. Um, so we're, we're running ahead with this. So the idea, the idea has been pushed and put out there many times about you know cashless society. I mean, um, we raised the topic of. Um, a barter cart system in the past as well, um, especially in New Zealand. The idea of a green card that you could, um, you know, you could take to the market, and the market could take to another place, and so on, and they'll get their cash out. Uh, you know, amount of car, um, like a green dollar, right? So um, this was also um, talking about green dollars. We'll soon have um, our friend online. Let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. <laughs> Captain, let me know when you're ready. Oh, here we go. Hello. 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 How's it going? All right. Welcome. Welcome, sir. Now we've got our uh, trio of us, uh, our duo, duo and myself, Malfunction, here uh, with our financial advisor, Jared. Taylor, one of our good friends. Um, we have RTV, a uh, game developer, banker, very smart person, like the both of you. Uh, I'm ignorant when it comes to banking. I'm ignorant when it comes to stuff. I'm ignorant when it comes to Wall Street and uh, shares and all that stuff. And I've been told that by my own brother, who's a bit more smart when it's economics, who's 15, 10 years younger than me. Actually, might be more than that. And I'm more of a practical person when it comes to things like this. And um, it, it's one of those things where I'm sort of, you know, I have more advice and sit back and let people tell me what to do when it comes to money and finances and stuff. So uh, this week, um, someone on my personal um, page on my Facebook page put up this thing and about cashless society. And I mean, myself and yourself, uh, Jared, have talked about uh, the green card, the green dollar and stuff. And, um, you know, and we've been, as I mentioned earlier, uh, before you were just on, about how we're like the um, testing grounds for most of what happens in the world because we're such a small, isolated community in New Zealand um, with closed borders. Uh, there is no like a land mass next to us that you could just jump across and come across to us. And we, we kind of like a lot of, uh, you know, testing grounds. Like FPOS was one of our testing grounds uh, for the rest of the world. Uh, do, you, do you know when, um, let's see, when when the FPOS system, um, oh, sorry, when the credit card system came in? I can't recall, actually. I, I do recall when ATMs came in, and I remember lots of people standing in front of them and just going like, I don't know how these things even work. Um, yeah, uh, a, a lot's a lot's changed in um, in in banking and in finance. It's pretty been you know kind of one of those areas that's kind of been one of the most visible sort of changes uh, that has kind of been ubiquitous. It's kind of affected almost every aspect of life, you know, and and um, and it's also been really interesting how how you know those changes actually kind of worked to kind of perhaps make the pandemic you know somewhat less impactful than than what it might have otherwise uh, have been in the past 
you know, with PayWave and, you know, people being able to do online banking and not needing to go into a branch and, you know, uh, banking and, and cash has been a huge, huge area of, of change in society over the you know, past, uh, I would say, like 30 years. Yeah. So um, how do you see, I um, mean, like you talk about how um, how uh, it made it things easier during this pandemic. What did you, um, what do you mean by that? Well, you know, like contactless payments, as an example. Um, and I, I, I suspect that recently they've, they've changed some of the limits for contact, pay, for contact yep. payments. They lifted them up, haven't they? Yeah. Um, you know, uh, not needing to go into a branch, you know, like there's pretty much most transactions that you can do now that, you know, don't need you to actually go in person into a branch. Um, I also uh, recall seeing recently that, that checks are, are definitely on their, their way out now mm -hmm. as well. Uh, and, uh, and and of course the um, the other interesting thing is is you know how this is is probably going to start to perhaps lead to maybe even more acceptance of, of how cryptocurrency and how different you know forms of, of payments and currencies and so forth uh, might actually become a bit more popular and and make a bit more sense to people now as well. That's the question I was going to ask about cryptocurrency. Do you want to um, hit that up, uh, re, um, RTV, on this, or uh, I don't know much about that? cryptocurrency. I, I tried to dabble in it and uh, got freaked out. <laughs> um, I mean, it's becoming a thing. It's interesting how much things have advanced, but um, yeah, I probably. <laughs> Leave it to someone else to talk about it. Um, as far as knowing that it, you know, what's safe to do and that. Yeah, I've been thinking about it as well. Over, you know, when it, when it came in, Bitcoin came in and stuff, and I was thinking, well, this is interesting, and should I buy some of it up? And and I watched over time. There's so many different things happened. You know, um, the value of it rose, the value of it dropped. I mean, just like shares, right? Uh, when you have currencies overseas, like uh, the dollar, which I deal with a lot of times. Um, that's only dollar apart from New Zealand dollar that I deal with because of um, business um, dealings. The exchange rate goes up and down, and sometimes you go, "Oh, this is a good time to you know get money across or get money over," because we'll get a better deal out of the American dollar. Uh, so um, that's an interesting thought, though, about bitcoins. Did it get affected by the pandemic, like uh, the currencies and interest rates? It surely yeah, did. Yeah. Yeah, it did. And, and what was really interesting about it is that for, um, you know, many kind of cryptocurrency and in particular Bitcoin pundits, is that what was fascinating is that it actually didn't do what people thought it was going to do. So a lot of the narrative around cryptocurrency has been around um, the fact that uh, the, so, so, um, What's, you know, the normal kind of currencies that we work in, you know, whether it be US dollar, New Zealand dollar, Australian dollar, um, you know, the J Japanese yen um, and all the other currencies, they're referred to as fiat currencies. And, you know, we can pretty, you know, get into like money. Like I, I actually think, you know, probably, you know, one of the, the, the um, most interesting things is that, even though the whole economy, everyday life, all operates around money, there, there is this like real lack of understanding of where it actually comes from. It's, it's almost like this fairy dust that floats around. And, and uh, I think it's really important that, that people, you know, better understand what money is, where it actually comes from, who produces it, who manufactures it. Now, of course, the, 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 the theory with Bitcoin and a lot of cryptocurrency holders was that when you get a situation like a black swan event, like a global pandemic, financial markets crash, everything goes crazy. And, and what you need is um, uh, that, that, that that's why the gold price went ballistic, because people go to what they call these safe assets. Mm -hmm. And so um, that did happen. Gold, gold did 
you know, um, appreciate significantly. One of the problems, though, is that if, if you're kind of dealing in this sort of like worst case scenario whereby, you know, everything's in lockdown, you can't buy anything anymore, you know, everything grinds to a halt, um, that, you know, it's, it, well, what's the use of having a gold bar, right? Because how are you actually going to pay for something with a gold bar? What are you going to do? Get a razor blade and like shave a little bit off and then, you know, weigh it with some minute scales and goes like, you know, there's zero, zero, zero point one of an ounce and, you know, give me a fish. Um, <laughs> And, and so the, the, the reason why people thought cryptocurrency like Bitcoin would be fabulous in a time like a, a, a pandemic is because you can do, you know, transactions to, the, to very small denominations. Um, you can do it on the Internet. You can do it online. Like there, there's heaps of places where you can go and buy and sell stuff online, you know, with, with cryptocurrency. It's not a, not a problem. Um, but, but Bitcoin didn't do what people thought. People thought that it would go ballistic, you know, that, that at, it, at, at its current pricing level, at whatever it was around the time, it might have been like, let's say 10,000. People actually thought, and I, I can actually say I was one of them, I actually thought like, you know, um, a commodity like Bitcoin, which is highly tradable, it's highly transactable, um, it's not like a gold bar that you've got to shave off a piece to buy a fish. You know, you can just sell, you know, a fraction of a of a of a of a cryptocurrency unit and, and buy something. Um, but it didn't happen. Bitcoin actually crashed. Um, it actually crashed. You know, not not as bad as what it has in the past, but it actually dropped in value quite significantly. It was quite like very counterintuitive. Now, there's a couple of theories around this. One theory is that people, uh, some people that had lots of Bitcoin, but also had lots of other, you know, what you might call real world money, were just lost so much money on the share market when the share markets did go down, um, that people were losing money because of lockdown, a um, whole range of different reasons, that what people were actually doing was actually selling lots of Bitcoin to convert it into real world cash to be able to pay for, you know, every everyday real world type things. Um, so we, so so it might have actually been a strange thing whereby Bitcoin actually did serve the purpose that we thought it would serve. It's just that because people had their, their feet in both camps of both the real world money and, um, you know, future money and they sold their future money in order to, you know, pay off debts or to have cash flow um, because the economy, you know, as, and we've talked about this before, Aru, is that, you know, like there, there's clearly a lot of businesses out there, even big businesses like airlines, right, that were really just running literally month to month on man carefully managing all the money that they're getting in from, from, from revenue. They've got all their debts and expenses and you know when everything was running well they were kind of able to basically on a month-to-month -month basis just kind of like carefully match off you know the money coming in and the money going out and of course when the lockdown came and the borders closed then everything just stopped and so um, for a lot of different you know businesses small to large everything dried up and so yeah. there's this suspicion that what people did was that um, because the, you know, Bitcoin, you know, it, it, you know, depending on how long they've had their holdings, they were just selling out. And so it was just driving the price down. The interesting thing is, is that as we know from the share market, for everyone that sells, someone is buying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Somebody is hoarding. There's always someone going to make a bit more money in the end. And, and it, it all comes down to, and this is the problem that people don't understand about assets and stuff. I mean, everybody, whenever there's some sort of like a financial thing, people go on about the millionaires and, uh, and uh, you know, kind of like the billionaire and they all kind of think, well, you know, this is, um, you know, why don't they all, you know, help everybody out and, you know, and stuff like that. And I'll kind of think, you know, I'm a bit, I've learned a bit more about this. I was one of those people. And the thing is, most of it's tied up in assets, in businesses, and uh, you know, and employee checks, uh, and uh, resources, and um, actual physical uh, buildings that they own. It's like, it's like telling, um, 
you know, Elon Musk, you're worth a billion dollars. And he's going, it's not in my bank account, mate. You know, it, it's not in my bank account, buddy. <laughs> um, I can't basically give that all away if I wanted to because it's tied up with businesses, with um, shares. Uh, I have responsibility to um, shareholders. I have responsibility to you if you own a share in my business. Um, and um, there is, you know, uh, money put in um, R&D, resource and development, or research and development, and all these different various things. And, um, you know, it's kind of like, well, can you guys understand that somehow forget about that I'm a billionaire for a moment, step back and think about what those, those credits actually mean to people and that it's not the dollar that's in my pockets, it's a dollar that's out there and nothing else that I can't actually touch if, even if I wanted to because of the banking system. Of the you know of the um, shareholder system, and every time I see that, I kind of chuckle to myself and I go, "This is another person who doesn't understand what it means to just have that tag of a of a um, of a billionaire yeah, yeah. tagged onto you or a millionaire." And it's like you're thinking about growth, and they're always trying to grow their income more and passive income streams and things. Mm -hmm. And so they do tie it up. But I mean, if they get hit X amount and they stop, like we've talked about some of the uh, comic companies where they've made hundreds of titles, they have one successful one. If they just focus, uh, yes, is that growth? And then sometimes growth mm -hmm. equals greed. Um, in some cases, I mean, yeah, if their money's tied up and businesses are turning around and have thin, you know, there's a lot of money in there and they get 1% of profit. Um, and that is tied up, but I mean, they have money they can spend on cars and boats and things that is, is, is money in the bank as if the fact that they got to keep on growing and more things that cost more money and more upkeep um, in some states, you know, so, I mean, they can be generous, I'm sure. Hmm. But I mean, maybe we could actually uh, have a quick chat about like, well, where does money actually come from? Um, yep. one, of the, one of the things that f fascinated me was uh, around, like, where does money come from? Like, like how do you make it? And uh, one of the things that always astounds me, and it astounds me even, you know, even today, is, is the concept of going, like, how, like, you know, let, let's say you print $100. That's, that's fantastic. You, 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 let's say in the economy... You, you print a hundred dollars and let's say you just distribute it out. So how how do you get 110? Because you've only printed a hundred dollars, you know, let's say you print hundred one dollar notes. Um, but then how can you actually have more than one hundred dollars? Um, how does it become 110? Uh, and, of course, it's really important for people to understand, you know, how money gets produced, how it gets manufactured, um, uh, and how, uh, you know, you, you can start off with $101 bills, but then eventually you, you end up with a million, one, you know, $1. Oh, ah, you, uh, you, can, you can breathe better. It's a bit now. hot. Uh, <laughs> so... Back to the 110. So how does it work? Well, it's because money is, is literally printed. And it's and it's printed, you know, through quite a you know interesting mechanism um, whereby uh, what governments tend to do is that they issue bonds which are a promise of, of future payment and and you know you you literally you literally print money. Now um, and it's actually as simple as that. It's just simply that what every country in the world does is that they literally print money. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, when we talk about things going cashless, um, all that that is is, is changing. Um, you, you could almost actually say that that a, a cashless society is, is, is basically just saving, saving on, on the printing bill. <laughs> That's really all it is. You're saving on the printing bill because then all you're doing is that you're just moving digits on a computer screen from one place to another place to another place. 
Um, Which but um, that money still comes from somewhere, and, and it's and it's created by governments. You know, um, in New Zealand we have the Reserve Bank, and the Reserve Bank makes money. It literally manufactures it. Now the trick is, is that um, you don't want to manufacture too much. Mm. If you manufacture too much, then what you do is that you then lower the value of your currency because it's you know in x amount of supply so what new zealand's doing at the moment the reason why uh, the reason like how they're paying for this pandemic is what they're literally doing is that they're printing money that's how they're that's how they're paying for this but but you can't print too much because yep. then otherwise um what you're printing becomes worthless that's why for example like if you go to the us or if you want to buy something online if you want to buy a comic online you, know, you see a comic and you go wow that's awesome like i've been looking for that comic it's only 10 bucks no that's gonna actually probably cost you about 16 dollars new zealand by the time it gets converted because the new yeah. zealand currency is 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 not valued as highly as the u.s currency you know the u.s currency is up here and the new zealand dollar is currently buying about you know 60 60 um, 60 cents but then if you go to australia from you know week to week month to month you know sometimes the new dollar will you know buy you will you know this is about the same as the australian sometimes a little bit more sometimes a little bit lower so there's all the all of this kind of like strange you know magic that happens with money um, the other thing um let's talk about like if it goes to digits right and we get rid of this um, physical form of money. There is such a high uh, rate that could, you know, I mean, fraud involved in that, where somebody could just sit in the computer and we we've watched enough sci-fi movies, enough actual thrillers or bank robbery things, where you can just go, you know, we just take a, a cent out of each account, you know, without nobody knowing it's happening. Right and now. Up a million dollars. Sorry, buddy. They, they, they can do that today. <laughs> Like, it's no yeah. different. It's on the computers that exist that way anyway. It's yeah. like the stamp, so, so money's probably not going to disappear. It might go less, and we might deal with it once in a month, but I, I doubt it will disappear in a hurry. I mean, maybe if they put a chip in our arm, that's the most likely. <laughs> then we can all scan well, our payments. Well, that's that's been kind of a thing that's been, um, you know, um, that a lot of people have just, you know, at the moment, even uh, what's his name, Bill Gates was talking about, hey, chipping everybody, it'll be easier to track and trace and monitor, you know, and stuff like that. And that's one of the things that really um, concerns me about where, even now, we already monitored anyway. We know our for mobile phones know exactly where we are. That somebody, you know, at, a, at our ISP can go, or our mobile provider can go, right, let's see where that guy is at right now. And, you know, a little tag will come up. Yeah, he's at home. Right, and also even when we go to use our Airpods cards, oh, he was there using the card at that time. So our banks know we are there. Um, and so, but now we're getting to a point where the government knows where we were or where we are because of contact tracing and this sort of whole, um, you know, the idea that we, we, you know, we have already have so many um, traces on us already. Why would we have another another trace if you're going to shop? Oh, because you know, because we're we're worried that something might pass on, or you might catch something. In, in and, a sense, though, wouldn't it be easier just to have one thing tracing you and doing everything? If you're an honest person and they're not a dishonest government, it's uh, there's not much to be scared ah, of. The same you, hit, you hit on my topic that I love so much: the idea that we will always have an honest government or person. So, so, history has taught us that we cannot trust people. And we cannot trust ourselves. If we cannot trust ourselves, how do we trust politicians? And we know we can't trust politicians. But we, I mean, the idea is that I always worry about a hard, hardline government that always comes in, when, especially when we're safe and we think everything's fine. Uh, you know, that's, you know, we obey the law, we, we'll be fine, obey the law, it'll be all right, our government's taking care of us. Suddenly, that government loses power. Another government comes in. And they're not about taking care of you. They're just talking about taking care about themselves. And I've watched this 
throughout history, especially with, you know, with uh, communist governments, especially with um, Germany during their own, you know, in the 40s, with these and what they're doing and how they slowly could change a normal thinking person, conscientious, conservative, you know, loving everybody, caring about everybody to put in their, their fellow men on trains to concentration camps. I never will ever will trust governments ever since I learned at social studies class way back in the 80s that people will turn evil if you let them and if you don't watch over them. So the same goes for governments. What do you think um, on that? Well, I think there's always good and evil. <laughs> like, uh, it's a universal balance. So, I mean, like, it happens with wars anyway. Like you said, concentration camps. That wasn't yeah. to do with chips and, and super control. That was a dictator taking over. If they came in with guns ah. and told you to do stuff, that's, that, that could still happen. Chips, but they, but they, they didn't have chips, but they had tattoos. But, they did it to they a lot of numbers. people. That, yeah, but they had their own, for the Jews, they had the number system. I reckon if they had chips, they would have done it. And the interesting thing would have been, I'm not to say that I agree with any of that, but like say it did happen and they got their vision, how would they yeah. treat their own citizens? How would they treat uh, the people they promised uh, you know, everyone to be all the same and looked after? You all have got the same goals. How would that be? Maybe, you know, would they control everyone like, or would they just stop and go, okay, we're all German now. It, you know, everyone's happy. Communism. Yeah, but like, I mean, Communism. how would that have been? Like, they, they wouldn't necessarily have corralled their own people. Maybe. Oh, they they if, you, if you look at Russia after uh, after World War II with the, uh, with the gulags, if you were an artist or a politician and you did not agree with the view of the uh, of the people in power, guess what? They round you up and they put you into concentration camps where you basically. One of my uh, one of the worst things I you know when I learned about the gulags and stuff and I was studying for um, in critic uh, one of these other books that I was writing uh, and uh, for comic books research for them. Uh, Final Zen, I think it was Final Zenith, where one of the characters tells this kid who is going to this place, um, you know, to this island, and he's talking about his grandfather during the gulags. And he was talking about how they, he was just didn't agree, and they, the government came and knocked on the door, took him away, and said, hey, uh, yeah, we're going to take you away. You're going to be fine. You're going to work for the people. You're going to be working for the people, providing food, providing clothing. Yeah, we like what you say. Now, one of the most horrid things was that the way, because of shortage of food, because the horrendous um, coldness of the area, there's actually, uh, recently I just saw from this place that they were just dumb people in the, because they were just dead because of the cold. They would eat fish guts and bones to, and rotten food to actually take them out, take themselves out of this, you know, like kill themselves because it was so bad. And there's not oh. necessarily always going to be the case. I mean, no. in China or something, they had where they took out all the smart people. They went and took out all the lecturers and things and murdered all their government and things. And that wasn't any better. And that was all the ignorant people and the artists. Yeah. They killed everyone who had like a high status. Or, exactly. Or so, so that's why when I, when I think about uh, politicians, there's always going to be a balance and a strong opposition is my thing. Like, uh, because I always think, because of the area of, that I write about all the time with um, fantasy and stuff, and so I, I always try to have six steps ahead. And what is the outcome if this happens? What is the outcome if this guy does, you know, as a character, if he does good things, what will be the out good things that character does on for that? And also, you know, and it's easy to think about villains because villains are the most easiest things to write about. Because uh, because they have so much, make them do so do so many hard things. Like we we're talking about earlier with my mask on, have you know, looking like a bank robber, right? You know, and you can basically, you know, disguise yourself and run into a uh, run into a uh, a bank, hold somebody up, and they would know they would know what what you were. And now I you know, you've got you like a, that's, that's harder these days. Like you wouldn't get enough money to make it worth your while. I can tell you that much. Not only that. Not only that, they can they can uh, was that three D print your um 
your whole body shape, your, you know, and, um, uh, catch your eye iris and fingerprints on so many things. Talking about which, about fingerprints, do you guys remember watching Gattaca? Gattaca? I've, I've oh, heard yeah. of it. Yeah. 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 Andy Nichol, one of our, one of our great sci-fi New Zealand directors, writers, who also did The Truman Show with Ethan Hawke. I think if I remember right, it was Ethan Hawke that was in Gattaca. Or might be somebody else, but it was Emma Thurman, maybe in that one. Mm. And it's basically a, a set in the future where if you are not, I think something about not having the right DNA or the right gene, and mm. um, you can't get the right job because of it, you can't advance in society because your DNA isn't the right thing. Um, and all your bright and brains, you don't, you're not smart enough. You don't make that cut. So what happens is that his brother. Uh, for you guys, you should have been watched it by now. There's no spoiler alerts here, right? It's been <laughs> over what, 20, 30 years now. But it's such a good story because it basically talks about how, you know, there's a society that only is about DNA. They don't care, um, you know, your, and your smartness. And so this guy wants to go to, I think it's Mars or the moon. He wants to get out, get out of it and make a better life for himself. And so his brother, who's, who's basically injures himself, um, do an accident and because this guy who's not so smart because he's not so smart he strives to be better this is so this is a very important plot story is that they go for a swim and he and his, he doesn't give up but his brother basically almost drowns and because of that he kind of i think it is he loses the use of his legs and so here's a smart man in a wheelchair who can't go and get higher in and the other guy who's dumb, easily, but can't get high income because or get a better job. And they switched roles. So he goes in under his name. And but all the time, what thing really, you know, because it's gone to a society, they don't worry about actual, um, they worry so much about like hair follicles and skin um, um, samples falling everywhere. They don't worry about the fingerprints anymore. So it comes down, you know, so there's that whole idea that, um, you know, we get to a place where um, we might, you know, this is the idea of people who think futuristic and right futuristic, five, six, seven, you know, things down the road. Let's, so when it comes to earning that, right, so say I'm not smart enough to earn, then the society decides, well, you know what, your value to society isn't the same amount as the other guy who earns a bit more or has a better job or so on. Um, how do you guys, um, you know, as a financial thing, think how um, governments think of us as normal human beings and as a citizens who might have social different socioeconomic levels, uh, um, our smart levels are, dumb, are, you know, a bit dumb compared to some other people. Say like a banker has a higher IQ than I do or say a scientist is more valued. Uh, and now we learned that everybody's, are really lower than the low right now because when you don't have a movie deal because of pandemics, all you can see in your home is such, you know, and to try to entertain without being able to entertain. And not only that, but then the same thing is that um, even we realize that doctors and nurses and food suppliers are more important than someone who does a host TV show, right? Or or some some other you know, or a sports person. So at this time when you can't do sports, what do you guys think of how governments value him, you know, citizens? It's changed the perception a little now. Uh, and so who, who used to be the ones who you consider really successful, like pilots now are doing train, uh, driving trains and things, but who used to be on the highest income and they've taken big um, cuts and um, whatnot so it's changed the the order of things i personally like when they've talked about a universal base income that's fair i think everyone deserves a fair chance to be passionate or enjoy what they do one of the things about some of the high earners is some of them love their jobs they're doing what they love and they're being paid a fortune for it whereas other people are cleaning and working their ass off and they're not loving it but they're going reliably doing their job they shouldn't be you know horribly less of value they should have the money to survive in my opinion and, you know, that should be possible. And, yeah, some people, especially the intellectuals, like a lot of them are very passionate about their jobs and they, they love teaching, they love creating, they love doing what they're doing. And they, they probably, their lifestyle, they spend most of their time at work. 
you know, they don't have as many needs necessarily. They're well looked after in the workplace. Like, so they get money on top of that so they can get fancy toys at home and they spend less time at home. They probably die without having as so much family and holidays, but they could have, you know, they're, they're so passionate about it. I think that's the rough thing is people should have the ability to live a good life, you know, doing what they can for the not so smart or people who don't get opportunity. Um, and, you know, they should have the money to be able to, you know, live a, a, a comfortable life, a happy life and develop themselves. And I think that's important. And you know, what you about if people, what if, what if people uh, just, you know, rather just not do anything? And like, you know, just sit back and just uh, get that dollar, uh, get that weekly thing and just carry on and, and, you know, and just let other people just take care of them because, what? you know, they just, you know, they I just want to ease. I think that um, the, the, that that stuff that's come up in the media with like the, the modern progressive world have talked about it. I think it's just a, a really nice concept and it's a new concept. We're moving into new times. Um, it could be the time for it. It might, you know, have those kind of pitfalls and things. Um, but, oh, geez, I've, I've, I've lost my train a little. Um, I had something to the contrary of what you said. Um, the people who do nothing say, like, so part of it is looking after your grandma. You know, your grandma's sick, taking care of people. We pay people to take care of our family members now. We pay people a lot of money to live with people who are dying. Yeah, you know, people could do that with their families and that could be valued. That's that's the point I was trying to think of. And that's part of the point that people bring up. I mean, that has equal value. And you know, that's exactly. gonna benefit your life. It can be simple, it's not necessarily super expensive. Go spend the day with grandma, feed her, you know, make sure she's okay, fill her cupboard, you know, do gardening, you know, share food, that kind of thing, if you had to. But I mean, the presumption I think with the income is that technology allows us to do a lot of things that make money without actually having to do as much. And so yeah. it's rather than one guy getting rich from, you know, a million <laughs> agriculture machines doing doing the job that used to be 100 people's job and then making 10 times as much money, 10 times more efficiently, it's sharing that is, is what I believe the concept was presented as. And that's not a bad thing. And that's what robots are giving us. You know, we're all scared of them. But if they give us that, then that's a gift. Um, yeah, sorry. that's one of the uh, recent um, kind of criticisms of the commentary around saying that the um, during the lockdown, you know, during level four, you know, it's kind of like the economy has come to a standstill. Well, it didn't. Like, you know, the problem there is that there's a lot of there's a lot of work, there's a lot of human endeavor that um, is not valued by the current economic system and so as you point out you know the fact that you know you might go and visit grandma and 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 make a meal for grandma and to visit her so that then you know the state doesn't have to you know have someone go and visit grandma like that's not valued and it's not valued in 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 lots of different ways it's not valued in a monetary way and also i don't think we want it valued in the monetary way I don't, I don't think you want to put a price and say you know you've you've added you know a thousand dollars to the to the economy this month because yeah. you've added you've added grandma three times i don't think we want to do that but it's well, just take not, away the personal um the personal emotional tie to that and make it into a dollar tie. You yeah. know, it, 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 I don't think we want to make that connection between visiting grandma, spending time with her, making her a meal, looking after her garden, taking out her trash. I don't think we want to put a do dollar value on it. Um, but by the same token is that, you know, the 10 hours that you might spend doing that is 10 hours that's not spent producing something that's valued by the broader economic system and that is deeply deeply problematic um and in fact you know what i think is actually even more deeply problematic is that you know we, we, when it got to this point whereby then we started to have this debate about going should we stay at home or should we, you know, start to allow shops and, and, and hospitality and so forth and other businesses to open up? 
you know, ah, oh, you know, is it worth the health risk? What's a human life worth? Uh, what's the risk? Da, 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 da. You know, like, you know, and people are going like, now, you know, now the New Zealand economy is going to be, you know, billions and billions of dollars in, in, in debt. It, it'll probably get up to a trillion dollars in the end of debt, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and globally, it'll be like, you know, infinitesimal amounts of trillions of dollars of debt, right? The, the problem is, is that, you know, we, we've, we've definitely done something not quite right if a little virus that we can't see that causes illness, if, if that's the, the, the little thing that's going to cause everything to come to a grinding halt. And, of course, one of the arguments that people were saying is that it's kind of like, you know, more people will die because of the lockdown than will die from the virus. Well, we're looking at that the wrong way. We're, we're going like, how do we manage to build the system? How, how do we end up with a system whereby we even have to, like, think like that? Like, that's wrong with our system. What's wrong with our system is that we have to make these economic trade-offs. Um, you know, we need to build more resilient ways of living and being whereby, you know, we should be able to go to lockdown and, and everyone should just go, yeah, sure, that's not a problem because, like, our economic system is not built on such a flimsy house of cards. You know, like, you know, uh, remember that great uh, interesting show um, that ran for a little while, House of Cards? Mm. It, it used that title because it was trying to describe yeah. how um, we end up in these political and, and economic situations um, whereby, you know, you, you just you just push over one little card and it's just going to be like this domino effect and everything's going to, you know, kind of come apart at the seams. Um, you know, this is where New Zealand's got this amazing opportunity to try and find a way to exit ourselves out of an economic system that is so fragile and flimsy and um, uh, so, so kind of... Um, uh, what's the word? So dependent on so many things working in a particular way, such that if you stop it, it all it all kind of goes. You know, is this is this peak human civilization? Like, yeah. that's a question. Like, is is this as good as we can do? Like, I don't know. That's, I don't know. Yeah, that's been that's been my my thinking for a while when we went into this. I was like, how easily are we able to be allow ourselves to be controlled is the flip side of that is like okay how much are we willing to give up for safety and stuff well, and i wouldn't even talk about in terms of control it's just kind of like you know like um the, the method that we used for covid19 like the, the, this was used in europe in the 16th century this is how yeah. in europe in the 16th century you dealt with a disease that you didn't know what it was how to deal with it da, 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 da. you know what you did yeah. you did a lockdown ah. you did quarantine you, you closed yeah. your borders like they were doing this in the yeah. 16th century like they were pretty clued up right and you, somehow and then you sent the guy with a mask on from door to door with a with a cart Send out your words dead and we'll carry them around and we'll yeah, dump yeah, them in the freaking like, hole. That happened earlier because they, they learned from that, right? They right. Oh, sorry. And, and, yeah. So this is talking yeah. about the Spanish flu. No, no, I'm talking, I'm just talking about like in the 1600s, you know, from the 1600s is that um, uh, they had, they had in, learned that you have quarantine practices. And so when a ship arrived and if, and if you got word, yeah that there was a, a disease running around that was killing people, what they would do is that they would close the borders or they would institute quarantine, right? Yeah. That was the protection mechanism. And so what we're basically doing is using 16th century technology about disease prevention and disease control. And like, you know, nearly 500 years later, we're using the same techniques that we used mm. back then. Right. Well, I think now, meanwhile, yeah, meanwhile, we can go to space. You know, we can we can develop nuclear weapons. We can we've got nuclear energy. We've got supercomputers. We're on the verge of breaking quantum computing, but somehow or other, we're still using 16th century techniques in, in order to manage diseases. It's quite hilarious. 
Um, Archie, you want to say something there? Oh, I just think it's like um, it's the ability to stop work is more the issue when we're talking about the money, though. Like, it's that ability. You know, some of us couldn't say, "Oh, I don't want. I want to be safe at home." And again, universal income, mm. if you know, that would be something that would allow more of, because you'd be like, okay, I've got my base needs covered, but the poor people who didn't and had mm. hardship and, and, you know, were struggling and scraping through losing savings, that's, you know, the, the bit that we're missing is like, we're not caring enough about people and the spiritual side, and we've got all this advancement in technology, but it's all gone, you know, towards efficiency and money, but, you know, like the human side. And that, that's a part of being human as well, you know, and so maybe we will get there. That's just, that's just my thoughts. Yeah, and that's uh, you raise a good point there. Uh, because there was there was a few areas of people that were actually had to work, right? We need doctors had to work. Even some of the retired doctors were were called in. You know, out of retirement to assist at you know certain levels of um, administration and so on. Uh, cleaners in hospitals had to work. Uh, food supply chains had to work. They couldn't say no. If you go before before lockdown and consider, like, okay, we all know there's a pandemic coming. We're hearing about the stuff overseas. People yeah. who are really cautious and safe and traditional might say, I'm going to lock myself away. I'm going to take some time off. I don't feel safe coming to work. I'm saying there'd be yeah. people with real thin budgets that go, shit, I, you know, I'd rather I'd rather stay yeah. home with my family safe, but i got to make money so they can eat. And, you know, thankfully our government chose to lock us in and not let numbers escalate and things. But if mm -hmm. they... Um, if they didn't, you know, some people would be making the decision for themselves. Like, I might have enough savings, or I'd be like, oh, screw it, you know, I quit my job, or I'm taking a holiday, and I don't feel safe coming to work. And I can make that decision because I could afford to. But those who couldn't could be in an even yeah. much more unsafe environment than me. Supermarket workers, for example, you know, and they're not on high income. They probably don't have their own house. They don't have savings, perhaps. You know, so that's, yeah. you know, so the government making that decision did us a lot of favors by keeping us, you know, a bit safer, but the money question comes in before all those safety nets and government decisions come in, is can you afford it? And, you, and the yeah. other aspect is that, you know, the New Zealand government was quite quick and, and uh, you know, was generous. Some people might say could have been more generous. Some people would say they were, you know, way too generous. Doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, you know, whether whether you could have got a hundred dollars or seven thousand um, uh, dollars, the interesting thing is is that in order to access those benefits, you needed a few key things, right? So one, you needed an internet connection. The other thing is yeah. that you actually needed um, uh, like a, a computer or a, or a mobile device. Or you might have actually needed a scanner because you needed to copy some some evidence or documents or identities. Um, so I think we we are also seeing that you know this is not just about money. It's not just about cash. It's about you know the way that these services um, are accessible um, to people. Um, you know. Uh, kids not going to school, you know, there was a lot of kids for, and, and I know a lot of kids who actually did incredibly better um, at home for that period uh, because the way that the school system works is that it doesn't necessarily suit all types of learning styles. Yeah. But um, one of the challenges was that, you know, and, and New Zealand did a, a fabulous job um, and the teachers and the local schools, um, you know, I know directly uh, from personal experience that, you know, uh, a lot of the teachers at um, primary schools in Whangarei and the schools themselves did an amazing job of staying connected to the students. Um, but what if your family didn't have a computer for you? What if, you know, what, what, what if auntie is, is so busy watching Netflix and there's only one computer in the house or they're only on a limited internet plan, then those children, you know, get excluded from the system. So I think one of the really awesome, awesome things about the pandemic, it was, it was kind of like a really good test run, I think, about where maybe some of the 
inequities, where some of the challenges are. And, you know, um, when we, you know, the the budget that's been out, you know, outlined, um, you know, it's got some nice features, um, but also, you know, like what happens if, if next time we get a pandemic? Like I actually really honestly think, like this is my honest personal opinion, that what we should be doing now is not going back to normal. That's crazy. That's insane. Absolutely insane. What we should be doing is saying, what happens when the next pandemic comes along and yeah. it's way more deadly than this one? What are we going yeah. to do? We should be focusing all of our national resources, our efforts, our, our energies, our thinking, our skills, our capabilities to work out what are we going to do for the next one? Because what if the next one is, is already, you know, brewing? And, and, and who knows that? What, who knows what nasty stuff's going to get unleashed? So yeah. I, uh, you may have seen my, my Facebook post around this because I was lying in bed one morning and just going like, because what happened was that I was lying in bed and I, I was just kind of like, oh, I don't want to get up because it's like it's raining so hard. Like I just could hear the, the rain, you know, outside. And, and then I actually got up and then, then I realized that it wasn't actually raining. It was, it was actually the, it was just actually the, the sound of the city. Mm. It, was, it was the traffic. It was all the, tr the new traffic noise that had happened from, 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 you know, level three to level two. And and more reason to stay in bed. Yeah, it was just the <laughs> ambient sound of all the traffic that it, yeah. it sounded like it was raining outside. And, and and what it got me to think about is that, you know, my big worry here is that I feel like, you know, this is like when you watch that movie and, like, you're watching it and you, you go through the thrills and the spills and the drama and, and everything and it's like, and then and then they capture, they capture the, the killer, they capture the criminal, right? And then you go, oh, okay, that's, that's great. And, and then you check, and then you see there's an hour left to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so go, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's the next hour about? Like, we've already, like, you showed me the problem. You showed me the disaster. You captured <laughs> yeah. the You solved the problem. You know, and it's like, and now we've got another hour to go. Like, what's going to happen next? And I feel like. I feel like we're in the middle of this movie whereby we, we feel like we've, we've, we've got on top of this. It's all nice. It's all fluffy, you know, and it's what I also call the dead cat bounce, right? So, so this, is the, the, this, this is a little known fact that dead cats bounce. It's, it's not good. I don't like to talk about it, but it's actually a I reality. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I, and I, yeah, I, the exuberance that's happening at the moment. Like I went into town the other day and it was like, it's busier than any Christmas I've ever yeah. seen. It's just insane. Yeah. Can't even go to the park. It's well, busy. That's the, that's the result of um, not being able to do something. It's always the same case. Like if, if you uh, if you're held back from doing something, you want to do it more. It's, it's human nature. And um, now we've been allowed to go out and stuff. Uh, even when you don't need anything, right? <laughs> You're still going to go out because you want to mix and mingle. You've missed your family. You missed your friends. Yeah. You missed, you know, hanging yeah. out in the stores, looking at junk, and, and just enjoying the fact that it's trained there. You never do it again. Trained Sorry, it's trained consumerism. <laughs> because I, I went out shopping and I didn't need anything really, but I, I, I had to look, and I, I kind of guess that's what most people do. <laughs> But that's what also trying to help the economy as well. Like, like because you, do you think that maybe you know does it does it kind of resonate with you that that maybe we're in, we're in this thing whereby it's kind of like it, it feels like you know we've we've solved the problem you know we're on top of it all but it's kind of like you look at the timestamp on the movie and there's still another hour to go and it's kind of like oh shit what's going to happen next I like I like that thought <laughs> I mean that that does seem possible like I mean we should learn it's that learning moment isn't it mm. and uh, are we going to learn or are we going to do things differently we're talking about it which is good like uh, 
<laughs> yeah. full screen. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I hope it doesn't happen. I mean, we seem to be on the right track, but there's nothing to stop something new coming and uh, hitting us just the same. And then I guess technically it'd be considered hitting us while we're down, while we haven't recovered. And yeah. But when will we recover? Three, four years? Recovery well, takes a long time. Well, for, I mean, that's a that's a great thing of uh, of uh, of having scientists and thinkers, right? Actual, when you actually sit back and think and philosophize about what's going to happen, shall we? Uh, and you're right about being prepared. I mean, being prepared is the best thing because when you're unprepared, you know, you know, when you're unprepared, you know, anything can happen, and it just does. And you know, it's the Murphy's but, but laws. If it's going to happen, it will happen. Is. Uh, like, you know, New Zealand has given, like, incredible um, respect um, and validation of, of good science, right? Like, um, and it's been amazing to see, you know, all of the, you know, best, you know, scientists, um, epidemiologists, virologists, you know, New Zealand kind of rolled out and, and put in front of the public, right? And, and like, you know, Ashley... You know, like he was the voice of the nation, you know, for like, you know, almost a couple of months, you know, giving his updates. But but my fear is that what happens is that we sort of go like, well, you know, we don't have a virus anymore. So, you know, Ashley, you know, go yeah. back in your little cave, you know, we'll, we'll wheel you back into the yeah. into the warehouse. And and the problem yeah. is, is that, you know, we, we got into this mess and I literally call this, we got into this mess because we, we have not been respecting the great minds, the great thinkers um, the great science that that we've got access to in this beautiful, you know, small nation, and and there's a reason for that. Is that we just, you know, we 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 just, you know, put them out into the storage shed now, you know, yeah. and um, and uh, we go well, you know, let's hope we've got an Ashley that we can wheel out for the next pandemic. Mm. Yeah, we there's a reason for that. that. It's uh, it's course you'll be right, mate. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, sadly, that's been the way the economy has been doing. That's the way the housing market's been doing. That's why we have allowed so many things to happen in New Zealand because you'll be right, mate. Um, the attitude, uh, because, you know, I, I, I don't think there was any in Australia. I'm an old fella, right? Anyway. I may not look it, but I am still, I'm about three years away from being 50, which is a dreadful thing for me to think about, but also the fact that I don't look it. I quite enjoy it. And the fact that my mind's still young, you know, I still think like a 20 year old, but actually think like a 80 year old as well, you know, because I can say, well, I remember the time when I sat and listened to a political rally with Winston Peters was talking about, I mentioned this in my private thing about housing market in 1990, 1995, I think it was. Of four, and he said we are selling out New Zealand housing market. Because and my friend next to me, said, it's because we think we, it's the she'll be right man attitude that we have in New Zealand. That is around about thirty odd years ago, and we're still there with the she'll be right mate. So and this is what there. worries me. You're, you're right there, uh, Captain, because I know. We'll do that. We will. We will go. Okay, now pass it. Okay, it's all right. Now you just go back into your cubby hole. You just crunch your numbers and stuff, and we'll we'll call you up when we need you. That that whole you know that whole yeah. We'll call you when we need you. But the, but if you think like me, you always think what next? You know, like yourself. What next? Uh, are we going to be prepared for it? How do we handle it? What are the best ways? Uh, to do that, and how do we make sure that we uh, we don't go? What, we, we don't even need lockdown because we're so, you know, so advanced in the way we do things now. We won't even need lockdown. We'll be just like, yeah, okay, you're gonna be, you're gonna get sick. You can go home, right? Uh, because of your 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 health and stuff, and oh, you'll be fine. You carry on working, and we can do that. Or when it comes to finances, we're talking about. We go, all right, you know what? When this happens next, we'll make sure that these people in this area of the pie need to have this much money to make sure that they have these resources. We'll make sure there's resources there for them. 
uh, the grants, okay, you, these are the caregivers that will make sure they will be available for them, make sure they check on them, and the grandparents and granddads. Uh, also, the young ones, uh, you know, we'll make sure that they have schooling. So what we need to do is make sure that we're ready to roll out uh, laptops and computers to ready for education on that level at that time. So we'll keep updating, right? So this is me in your head. We'll make sure that each uh, OS system every year is being up, uh, every six months or whatever it is, on these computers or this setup is being updated. So we update, no viruses on them. So we can just send the old post around, yo, you need this, it's ready to go, sit down, start start learning now, you have no excuse. Also, oh, you don't have um, fiber, fiber, right, we'll make sure that every house in New Zealand has fiber, and we'll just switch it on when we go into lockdown. Education's good. And that sort of thinking, you know, just, and wider and wider, I think you're right there, because there is always a, there will always be a what next, and there, and it always gets harsher and more horrible because that's how society is. I mean, like we've been through pandemics, as you mentioned before, 1600s, Spanish flu, uh, um, quite, um, what is that? Uh, is it virus ships or something? Ships they used to call it. You know, I mean, even the Drac. You know, if you watch the movie Dracula, you know, virus he comes to the port and then he gets and starts affecting everybody and. I think that's isn't that part of the virus ship that came out of that? The story it kind of just feels to me like yeah, plague ship. Plague. Oh, ship. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of feels like at that time when she was um Bram Stoker was writing, he's probably thinking plague ship ships, right? In the back of his head. Right, this thing has to come from this plague from Romania, has to come to England, you know, and rather than quarantining, it goes in the thing. I mean, my, my forebears, my forebears came from India and, and ships and died on those ships because of uh, malaria uh, and whatever else, uh, uh, diseases uh, and, uh, you know, weevils in, the, in their food and stuff. And there wasn't enough food, starved to death and so on. So the idea of ships, you know, I understand that. But the other thing about us in New Zealand, we are like a ship, a ship aren't we? You know, because, you know, we're basically the waka of Maui, but, you know, our South Island, if I remember right, if I remember right, my, sometimes my mythology is a bit thing, fish of the ocean. And, um, but you think about it, we are like a ship away from the rest of the world. And we, we have opportunity, as you mentioned, to actually, as a small nation, to be going, hmm, you know, we can do better and we have done better. But we can't put Ashley away in the, in the in the back room anymore. We have to get our little epidemic. All our freak thinkers, you know, even our tech people sitting there going, like I mentioned, uh, computers and stuff, sitting there going, right, let's get a, you know, let's get a, a chart together and start listening what we learned from this and what we're going to come up to fix it next time. Um, who wants to carry on? I wouldn't know where to start. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it was Nick, a roundabout way. On, on the show, be right. Oh, you go for it, man. Fast. No, 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 no. I, 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 I've talked a lot. Um, uh, but uh, what, what, what about? How about we talk? Okay. So, how about this? One of the challenges we face is that uh, even you know, even if you know, New Zealand as an island, as its own, you know, waka. Um, the problem is, though, is that we're so deeply connected to the rest of the world, you know, um, we're, we're so reliant on the weather patterns. You know, like, re really the big, the, the really big problem that's, that's not being talked about, and, and we're going we're, we're gonna to see this in coming weeks, actually, we're already starting to kind of see it. You know, there's the big typhoon or um, hurricane that's been running through Bangladesh and India. Um, you know, whilst we've, you know, whilst everyone's been so busy about wondering whether they're going to survive the coronavirus, you know, our, mm. our biggest issue is really climate change. Mm. I mean, a lot of times um, climate is always changing, but I, I think... One of the, talking about Bangladesh, right? Right now, Amazon 
is trialing food delivery in Bangladesh and alcohol delivery in other areas. So you got drones from um, from Amazon delivering these things. So talking back about uh, Bangladesh and uh, typhoons and stuff, what the last typhoon we had, what was it, um, the tsunami we had? Some of the people, we still don't know where they are of that. And, you know, and... Um, and we we'll, may never know. And and some of the people, the other downside of some of the people who might have used that to lose themselves and create a new life for themselves. And <laughs> I, I wonder, like, in the, like um, talk, talking about that also, there was a hurricane in Fiji during this time. And uh, 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 I think uh, Tavalu, I think it was, or Tavalu, um, but and there was... They had to find, figure out, fly over and find out what was happening, and and they it took them a little while to get the food to these people and stuff. So Fiji got hit twice, you know, with the pandemic and lockdown and stuff, as well as that. And you know, and um, tell us more about this um, situation in Bangladesh. Are they well, coming into it? Yeah, well, you know, there's been a big typhoon that's come through. It's actually um, been classed as you know, one of the largest, biggest, um, you know, hurricanes in a long time. But, I, but you know, the um, California is now this week going into a really hot period again. Um, yeah. There were actually some quite interesting uh, reports about that because of the coronavirus, they haven't been doing in California a lot of the kind of, fire prevention you know safety mm. mechanisms that that they might normally have wanted to do so you're looking at this potential um kind of collision of further intensely hot um summers so the bay area this week is is gonna you know have have a bit of a heat wave um that means that you know the already dry forests are going to get even drier they haven't been doing the fire prevention because of COVID-19 and so you're looking at this kind of like in all different parts of the world this kind of like collision of like the the next wave of things because you know the the northern hemisphere summers have have become increasingly um complicated hot um, and, you know, like it was, you know, it, like seriously, like it seems like we've already forgotten that, you know, almost a year ago, um, you know, California got devastated by some of the worst fires. Well, Australia uh, as well. Australia as well. And that was only like that. That was only, you know, like four months ago. Um, yeah. And we had our and, droughts. Yeah. And then you've got um, the fires in so Siberia. Um, so I, I actually think the, um, you know, we're, we're in for some real turmoil. So like you were saying, Artie, but I think what's going to be happening is that, you know, on top of where we're at now, there's going to be this layering now of all of these other things. So it's like, you know, devastating fires, devastating droughts, you know, devastating um, environmental impacts are going to layer on top of, you know, COVID-19, um, that potentially might unleash, you know, kind of other, you know, nasty mm. stuff. Already in Africa, they're talking about plagues of locusts. Um, mm. So, uh, and and then, of course, as you mentioned, Aru, right, is that from time to time on the planet, we, we have natural disasters, right? Mm. We, we had that massive tsunami, which I, I guess now is maybe like 20 years ago. We, we had the Christchurch earthquake. Has it been that long? Hmm? Has it been that long, the tsunami? Uh, it's not quite 20 years, but it's getting it's getting close. Yeah, it's, it's pretty like 18 I remember years. like only you know, being a couple of years ago, it was such a huge impact on, on, on society at large. I mean, yeah. touching the ocean rise and just, you know, uh, tectonic plates thing it were uh, and you know washing out this whole friggin you know was it Indonesia um, in that area yeah yeah um, 
so you know like we, we've got to realize is that you know we're 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 this is why i say i i, I think we need to be turning our national attention to how to better prepare for natural disasters human-made yeah. disasters and and the kind of out there type you know events um and and disease because yeah. you know there's nothing in in science and there's nothing in mathematics to say that these things are spaced out evenly right yeah like, you know the world doesn't work out like that you know how they often life you know, doesn't and, work out like that and, you know, and we've all experienced it ourselves, whereby it's kind of like sometimes these things come comes and they they come and like freeze, you know. That's you know, <laughs> you, classic. You, yeah. You, you, you accidentally, you know, crazily, randomly fall over in your bathroom, you know. Then you crash your car, and then you and then you you know find out something yeah. else has gone wrong. And, and then COVID nineteen. Uh, and <laughs> And yeah. and you know that's but that's my big fear is that you know um, even though the probabilities mathematically are quite small of saying is that we we have this event now, yeah. Uh, but there's nothing to say that you know the next event is going to be fifty years from now, all right? Yeah. Um, there's no you know, marker on it. There's no well, mark on these sort of things. It doesn't really work. Are we expecting a big earthquake? Are we? That might trigger the volcanoes. So that's something to look forward to. <laughs> well, the, well the, yeah. the thing is that we have monitoring. We have, when it comes to nature and stuff, uh, we have good um, weather, I should say, good monitoring systems, and we keep create, you know, getting better at that. Let me talk about Christchurch. Um, it happened, you know, it happened what ten years ago, if I remember right, because I, no, I just come back to Fun Right. Right, because because see, don't forget, like everyone's forgotten about White Island, like. That exploded. It killed a whole bunch of people. In fact, um, I, I, I don't know what the death toll is, is doing at the moment. It would almost be kind of like great to have a graph of saying, like, you know, who's who's killed more people in the last six months? Um, I've noticed that the road yeah. toll has gone up. Like, more people have been have been killed in the in the past two weeks than, than were killed in the last two months, right? Yeah. Then we forget about White Island. White Island exploded, killed a whole bunch of people. Uh, coronavirus. So, so it would actually be kind of interesting to kind of like see, like, you know, who's killing more people right now? Well, that's, that's the same thing that make people had argument about, you know, saying a flu, you know, more people die off flu in that same whole month than have died from, um, you know, in different areas of the country, not every country, not every state, as they keep saying, but have died from the flu than have died from the virus, uh, you know, from the pandemic. Let me... Let me talk about um, back home here um, with Christchurch. There's still areas of crisis, to my understanding, that st still hasn't been fixed yet. Yeah. Ten years later. So if she'll be right, mate, attitude is affecting Christchurch, right? Well, I and think we haven't fixed Christchurch in ten years, and yet we, you know, we've been in a situation we haven't actually put our effort into Christchurch enough. And they still haven't got to the level they were, you know, whatever there was. Uh, that just shows us that we basically are still in that whole area of like, we can take time with this thing. We can take time fixing. We can take time. And when you were talking about like, you know, oh, hey, you know, let's uh, get on board and make sure we we have the next one. If we treat New Zealand like we treat Christchurch, that shows – that doesn't fare well for us going forward. I, I, I lived in Christchurch when it happened, though, and mm. I've seen it. It, it. it didn't so much fix, and they're still damaged, but they transformed it. So, like, things like the green, like, everywhere's got where you can plug in your cars. Um, so they transformed everything to be green energy. They got big bike racks for parking, so they tried to make it more kind of uh, an eco city, a bit different. And so the thing that took a long time that's still there is all the half falling down buildings. I don't know why it takes so long to take down a half brick falling down building. That's the core problem. And probably the main problem there is the land underneath it probably has no value. And so they can't be bothered. But they've spread out the other things and it, it functions fine. So they have changed it a lot. And it's not, you know, they put in a lot of work and it, it recovered relatively fast. The she'll be right attitude had people out there getting it done. 
uh, for ages. I, I, the only thing is those buildings. And, you know, they say they serve as monuments in some places. But I think it's purely just the land is not worth anything because it's all a liquefaction. And so it'll be red zone and they can't be bothered bulldozing them. That raises a good question. Let's switch that to people not having value. Right? Back to people. So in a society, if we don't, if we, just like this building half there, you know, if we don't value them enough, we just don't look after them enough. So do you, I mean, do you think we do the same with people in our society? I mean, we've talked about it, right? If we're doing that with buildings, if we say, this is how we look, say to Christchurch, we look at Christchurch as New Zealand, and some broken people, uh, and we go, well, they, they have less of value to us, and so we'll just let them, you know, leave them there, and we'll carry on with the people who have more value. A sneaky brain's always, you know, thinking, well, shouldn't we help those people, you know, get a bit better? Because why are we treating them with less value? As we mentioned earlier on your, um, RTV, you mentioned, you know, how some people don't have that much money, and you can just basically – uh, stay at home, those that have, get, you know, worry about the jobs and stuff, getting to finance, and and those that don't. And, you know, I mean, I'm, there's so many people in New Zealand who have become unemployed, right? But there's so many people who who don't have to worry because they'll get that check every week, uh, whether they do it or not, or they're on a salary or not. But there's also the worry that there's future unemployment coming even after this, because of that, because of lots of, uh, of uh, businesses, small businesses, economy, of uh, flattering because of what we're doing. Um, I mean, we saw Burger King go. So yeah, they, that's say what that, they say that a lot, though, like, and it doesn't always happen. It's always coming, oh, the next time will be the last, will be the worst ever. You know, there's, there's still jobs for people in areas. Like, maybe they're not paid enough, and I agree with that. Yeah. But there is jobs. And, you know, like people did lose their jobs and people might not have jobs to go back to, but it's not to say there's not a job for them somewhere. It's just uncomfortable. Yeah. So we're probably just too tight, too tight in our, our wallets and our purse strings or how we live. Like how Jared talked about businesses and how they run on a very tight scale and they have so little actual extra, you know, candy floss to, to feed on that we're the same. We just kind of, with credit cards and stuff, we plan ahead, we spend ahead, and we go, oh, I'd like that. And then we owe money that we can just kind of scrape through. And so, yeah. you know, like we, we probably need just a bit more leniency there on, on all on all grounds. And it goes into what you were saying about giving people computers too yeah. um, in every house. Maybe that's part of that universal thing. Maybe you pay $50 uh, you know, out of your universal income and that – gives you a nice computer system and broadband because yeah we all do need it now or we all sh should have it available to us um the other so, thing I mean, is that giving that to people they need to get out there and be educated on how to use it as well and not everybody you, wants to learn home, if they are at home they probably can like tutu on it and figure it out but so what you all you need is like a system that basically i mean i think they just have a normal system like everyone else but it could have a tutorial at the start that goes into yep. your name, click here. Can, you know, I, like can a good thumb down. You, I can guarantee you, you give a computer to a 10 year old, they will work it out. Yeah. Yes. Amazing. Yeah. Like, yeah. To a 50 year old. Um, you know, a willing 50 year old, yes. <laughs> well, you know, but it's interesting, you know, um, uh, this is this is where um, sometimes, you know, learning is characterized by age. You know, there's definitely, um, there's definitely some interesting theories around like how people learn. I'll, I'll take that one back because my dad is 80 and he's been on a computer since uh, 1980. And he and he's probably knows more about it than I do. Yeah, yeah. But there's this, there's one of like, you know, there's definitely a, level, isn't Yeah, there was definitely a, a a change of thinking and 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 look, you know, there's actually some scientists um, who have done research around this, which is around how um, uh, how like th there's these strange phenomenon whereby when enough people or enough of a species know how to do a particular thing, it actually becomes easier for the for the the next generation to actually learn how to do it, but. You know, we've we've seen um, 
you know, even our uh, kind of, you know, 10 year old um, find features in Zoom that we didn't even know existed, you know, like they just somehow play and they find things and they're not scared to, you know, navigate around and TikTok. very comfortable. <laughs> Um, but, but I agree that, you know, we, yeah. we need to understand that, you know, it's a bit like with ATMs is that, you know, when we're, and that's kind of like going back to what we first talked about. When ATMs first came back, came out, there were some people that seemingly, you know, worked out how to use them and the card and, and they were very comfortable with it. And, and there's people still today still today who who just can't work it out they have well, to go into the they, they don't want to deal with robots <laughs> is the other I don't thing know if it's about that there's just something that just you, you know, get both yes, you get there. people who are technology phobes and then you get people who go i want to deal with a human and you, you do get well, that, I like that when it comes to stop with with grocery. yeah, yeah and, and like, actually like you, deal with get it. Both. you get the people that 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 want to deal with a human, even though like they're quite au okay fait with technology. This is actually one of the so so you know one one of the interesting developments this week has been that uh, Joe Rogan apparently, um, who's got a huge following, millions oh, yeah, and millions yeah, totally. of people, um, is uh, ditching other platforms and moving exclusively to um, Spotify. And um, this is actually like much more of a huge development than what I think is is kind of being understood at the at the moment. But you know, because this goes into all of these aspects of censorship. Um, yeah. But also because you know, as you get an increasingly tech savvy you know audience, then. You know, you can actually, you know, kind of like make these dramatic steps and changing platforms. Um, uh, but, you know, like I think we need to um, still go back to um, ensuring that, that we don't leave, leave anyone behind. Yeah. In saying that we don't leave anyone behind, let's not leave anyone behind you know, with where they are at, you know, like yep. not everyone has to be, t to be taking the same journey. Like we don't need to be getting everyone computer literate. I, you know, I think we need to value where where people's strengths and skills and expertise lies. Um, uh, I, I think there's a real danger in, in forcing everyone to be uniformly on you know of having the same abilities that we have to be on this platform and we need to make sure that everybody else also has got a valid voice whether they're digitally connected or not um you know i spent a well, lovely actually last couple of days with uh two people that that i really you know love and respect a lot and and they're, they're through this period of time of lockdown They've been more deeply appreciating getting back to nature, being yep. less digital, being less connected. Wow. Um, they've got a beautiful voice. They've got a beautiful vision. They've got a, a, a beautiful way of living life. Um, and so we need to make sure that we don't, you know, make the mistake of making this the only way of, yep. of connecting with the world. Yeah, was well, the world's oh, movement. Oh, we, um, hold on for a sec there, uh, RTV. On that thing, when we're talking about like um, not everybody being on the same level of IT, I think we do need people to understand a basic level of operating a computer. There are some people who still don't know how a computer works. And we've been in this for about, what, 30 or years since the 90s for us. I know when I got back into it. I, I, they, they don't have to carry on. And this we, is, should, we should uh, respect those people. And uh, in fact, what oh, I think I we, should do, we, should, we should value them and go like, wow, that's really, really cool. Because, you know, if we, um, and this is why I really encourage, you know, 
anyone and everyone to, to watch that recent um, uh, interview between Joe Rogan and Elon Musk, where Elon Musk yeah. is talking about, you know, literally the future of digital implants and yeah. and what that's going to open up and just approach it with an open mind, right? No, you know, don't, don't yeah. kind of dodge it. Or yeah, I, 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 I'm, with, with my sci-fi brain, I'm always thinking that but what I'm here is just having a basic, literal understanding how to get on Facebook. A lot of people just don't understand. Just I, I because, agree, Jared. I mean, that's, yeah, that's, that's, because that's, keep the question. mark. Protection. Oh, I understand all that. I understand all that. And the reason I say that is... Or a resource. Yeah, yeah. It's your question. Yeah, the, so if it's a utility and you've got to do it, then fair enough. But it doesn't mean... Yeah, they, yeah. But you can liberate yourself from it. It's a, it's a good thing if that's perfectly, right. Yeah. yeah, perfectly perfectly warranted. What I mean is that to have a slightly basic understanding of how things work, otherwise it's like being a cook, right? If you don't know how how if you mix how to put the rice in the water and how to heat it up, a, cookie a lot of people don't even know how to do that. Yeah, well, there's lots they, of so used to they're so used to just buying it ready made or or you know just buying it pre cooked and stuff like that. Because he's, but what I, what I mean, I understand all of that, and I'm not you know one of the you know, because I understand I love nature. I, I my backyard was I spent my my. Just I walking into the backyard, all we, you know, into the mount, uh, onto our hills and enjoying it. But I'm not one of these guys who basically digital, digital, digital. What I mean is that there's a level of understanding to stay connected to each other. It's like, like you know, if, if so your great, friend make the wall too big is the problem. Hold on for like, a minute. Hold on for a minute. Let me let me finish this, and I'll let you have a good go. What I mean is that if we if we don't know, I have a basic understanding of how a computer works and how to get a Facebook or whatever digital platform you want to use, we cannot talk to someone in Estonia. But that's it. Right now. Do we have, the world's made it so we should expect that as a norm. It, it's not. But it's why not? Because so but that also helps us grow there's, as there's a person. There's people nearby you that you don't know. Like, I don't know Jared very well. I've met him once before. Yeah, like, but I could know him better rather than someone in Estonia and then value some yeah. local person. That's but what this is. The, but this is what I mean. See, like, you haven't met Jared better, but here you are with us talking on this platform, and someday that's we'll meet physically. That's, that's my whole thing. That we'll meet physically not, and be there together. And I uh, and but we do need just because what comes next, and and if those people don't understand what comes next. And they get these computers handed to them. They don't know how to teach the children how to use it, or the children will probably teach them how to use it. They'll get frustrated. There'll be a little anger. There'll be, you know, more frustration, and so on. But if we just say, "Hey, you know what? We're going to do free classes just to just to help you understand how this works," and you just can carry on, go back you to nature, do your thing. You're portion of the most wealthy in the world that a computer illiterate. There'll be a chunk of them that have no idea and avoid computers like the plague, and they're the very wealthy, successful people. Like, it's still That's, okay to not know how to use a computer, I, I think. But the way society is going is that if we want to be um, – and this is a great – this is what I love about technology. I mean, I'm a guy who taped cassettes, as we, you know, we all have, right? The, our favorite songs on that weekend that was only playing that freaking day. What what I think is a good thing to understand is that not everybody wants to be part of this uh, thing, but we can all enjoy it, that whole system and uh, appreciate from like yeah, we wouldn't know about Joe Rogan unless we had TV. Like <laughs> you know, if we didn't, know, I mean, I wouldn't know about Joe Rogan unless I had a TV. So if I did not have a TV, with, because it's technology, of course, then I'm left out. And we don't want to. I don't want to be part of the culture that leaves people out. Um, well, it's cool not people out, but some people that voluntarily don't want that's to be fine. part of it. Yeah, like that's that's. I think that's the discussion. Yeah. That's the but argument. That's fine. Yeah. I think, um, and that's okay. But then, what happens if, like, we're saying that what what happens next? Um, how do we help those people that want to be that don't want to be? Probably the question. 
I mean, we should change the way the world uh, is functioning and, and operates is the other question. You know, we've led it to this way where technology has such a hold and importance. And I love technology, but you know, like you know, the world doesn't have to be that way. If life was simpler, like would we use technology as much? You know, maybe not. <laughs> I've lost, I've lost you to argue with. Um, but that's basically the point there. Like we could choose to make a new world, a new direction, and it doesn't have to be so technology requirement. You know, like technology is important for some things, mm. and then you know, there's, there's other functions where it's got no value at all. That's true. Yeah, and that's that's, um, but us coming out of lockdown. You know, that's one of the, um, I think, big misnomers, one of the big misunderstandings that we've reached is that we, we tend to equate um, this tech, this tech progress mm -hmm. with somehow being equivalent to uh, progress in how we are going as a human species. And, and I think we've got to separate that nexus because, like I was saying before, is that the fact that we, we still had to use 16th century technology yeah. in order to combat, um, you know, COVID-19 mm -hmm. um, shows that, you know, we're, we're, we're running at this kind of like multi-level level of, of, of technology works for us well in some areas, but then in other areas we are incredibly backwards. And and I think that you know the 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 people that want uh, that either don't want to engage with technology or. But that's uh, my point there, though. With 16th century, will we be, will these people be 16th century again? That's. I Sorry about the fact. No, no, but, but, but see, that's the thing, right? Is that what what we're overlooking is the fact that you know um, the the future of of the human species is 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 not tied to the next best biggest computer. It's not mm. tied to you know, like just think about TVs. Like you know, our civilization is it has not been enhanced because we we went from. You know uh, the old style, you know, tube televisions, and and then we got LC, you know, plasma screens, and yeah. then we got LCD screens, and now we got 4K, and like yeah. you know, you know, someone's going to dream up something better, and then you know, even virtual reality is is the other, you know, kind of you know, yeah. kind of thing. You know, like I don't think our culture has been enriched necessarily by these things like does it really make a difference um whether i can watch a tv show in 4k versus you know 720 you know like really does it does it does it matter in fact in some cases what what the technology is doing is that it's actually making really shit stuff be um available when it shouldn't because it's crap it's really shit, you know. Like, you know, it's it's a bit like with art. Is that you know still you know the the most poignantly beautifully drawn pencil sketch can can still you know blow away you know the most beautiful four K video of anything you know. Um, we, we, we need to, you know, this comes back to, to values, but it's, it's, it's once again, it's about values in a different way. And, and like tying this back about this whole conversation about money, like what, see, what money has done is that money has, has kind of, and I don't want to use the word perverted because I think if I use the word perverted, people would take it in the wrong way. And, and, and I don't think it's a good representation. You know, we've talked about, the work that's done around, you know, looking after our elders, looking after those in our community that need help. Um, so there's 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 lots of things in our in our you know human experience which which are valuable and which are rich and so forth. And and I think we but this is a really great opportunity, you know, for New Zealand to, you know. Um, look at what do we really value what what was actually really lovely in in the budget even though it you know it's, you know could have done 
lots of things differently is that we're going back to valuing our nature you know do, do you know that that um pretty much everywhere in new zealand like it's unsafe to drink the water oh no you know, like, like our waterways in new zealand have become so polluted oh. that, it, yep. that it's not, it's not safe to drink them like yep. so, so you know maybe what locally going back to some like fundamental basics and saying like what do humans need humans need food water no. and air okay let's do that really well right oh and shelter and, don't be shelter we need and shelter. shelter and shelter <laughs> so, so let's actually that's a really good point actually thank you Aru, Aru, for that because that is actually a really big problem in new zealand is shelter yeah um but like it's always been my thing that's why i voted the way i voted because of shelter yeah let's do those four fundamental things and let's say new zealand is the is 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 the dumb dumbest nation in the world because what because what we've chosen to do is that we're going to do four things really well we're going to have drinkable yeah. water we're going to have yeah. um um we're going to have unpolluted air we're, 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 we're going to have people that can have shelter um and to have you know, good quality, safe food to eat. Like, you know, like call us, you know, what we should do is say, we're going to become the dumb nation. We're going to go back to basics and we're just going to focus on four, four things. And, yeah. and, and that, that, that's what we're going to focus on for like the next decade. Um, yeah. I, I think if we did that, I, I think, you know, we, we would be the most outstanding nation in the world. But then that presents us with another challenge, which is what you were talking about before, Aru, which is like, and and then what do we do around, you know, inviting people into this country? Like, you know, this is already an invaded country where where we've actually still got unresolved issues around um, you know, colonialism. Um I, I which I, raises I, the point, like I've always wondered, like, I mean, you look at Fiji, right? Fiji's uh is a colonized nation. Uh they gave up um, colon, um, colonization in 19, um, 1917. And uh, um, the reason I raised Fiji is because that's where I'm born. And um, New Zealand's my adopted country, and I, uh, and I love it more than I'd love thing in the world, and I would never be anywhere else than here. One thing is how long before we – it's always been in my back of my head, and some people hate me, my, even my Harry friend will hate me for saying this, and I've always not wanted to say it, is that how long before we sort it out and can we can go forward as a nation? And this is what Fiji has done, right? Fiji had a choice uh, in, um, I think, in 1970, and it was uh, for until about 1980, uh, 10 years later, they had, um, they had about coups and stuff. But in about nine, um, 2005, Bani Rama came in and said, I'm sick and tired of two nations, of two peoples. I'm sick and tired of uh, Indians, Chinese. I'm thinking of Fijians being there. I'm, uh, uh, you know, Takawi, uh, Taraki. Uh, I can't remember. Sorry, I have too many cultures in my brain. And, you know, this and that and this and that in Fiji, we're going to be one nation. And that's my question, is when are we going to stop floundering and you know, and people can hate me all they want over this. And you watch what has happened in Fiji because of the One Nation. There's been physical growth, financial growth. Uh, people have come back to Fiji. People that left because of the coups in Fiji, because they wanted two people. They want to divide the country. People would just, you know, people um, were just ransacking. People get Fiji. Women were getting raped because of the anger because of it and stuff. And there was violence and in the streets, violence in the villages because of the coups and stuff that were happening. And Vani said, you know, said, listen, enough of this cultural rhetoric. If we want to proceed forward as, as and, and show ourselves as a place to be in, you know, as a, and you look at how Fiji's grown in that time, in the last 15 years, since 2004, so much growth. Uh, it's, it's seen as a pinnacle in the South Pacific, but I also don't like it because of outside, uh, you know, things in there. 
he's basically said we have one one rule for everybody and i think it's i know so much uh issues at stake uh, even if, he, if you look at fiji our uh, the indian people are basically treated like slaves secondhand slaves so i understand that when it comes to new zealand it's a different thing but when it, when it comes to fiji it was virtually slavery uh disguised as work and it was that for 35 years and uh and that's similar things you know you look at uh, indigenous cultures all around the world happened that way you had atrocious things happen there's no we are, fiji isn't the one thing different from everybody else or news is the one thing different from everybody else and so in australia and america and so on but what happens in society is when you start building upon a two different system uh two world system type thing in one country you always won't further yourself and help everyone someone will always lose out and this is what happened in fiji for about 30 years someone was losing out there was like villages even fijian villages right native fijian villages were losing out because some other villages wanted more for themselves or native uh you know some uh in, um indian you know minister was trying to help his own people more than the other city and this is what we have when it comes to culture and people there's people are cynical people but you know, um, they they have big swings. They turn from left to right when money is concerned, and because we're talking about money all the time here, I, I mean, on, at the moment, that when money is involved in anything, someone's always, always gonna lose out. And I always worry that there's one tribe somewhere going, we need a bit of help, man. It's better off at doing book work. No, and this I'm the same when it comes to book work. I, I go, I wish I had somebody do my book work because I'm weak at this level, you know. I think we need to resolve what we have in New Zealand pretty quickly so we can go together forward. I'll open up to you now. I'll, I'll vote for you. I'll vote for you. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good speech. Division of problems. I think, and then you like you say, wealth is a smaller faction of it, but like every reason you make to hate someone else, like religion, like it's all problematic. And so, yeah, if you can get on the same page with as much as you can, it's a sensible way to move forward. I, I agree. <laughs> yeah, I think, um, you know, what I've really enjoyed about a lot of the chats that we've had is, um, you know, one of the big problems I'm seeing at the moment is um, that people are finding reasons to not talk to each other. They're finding reasons to um, defriend people, to um, censor, um, uh, and, you know, uh, there's a really interesting, um, um, you know, theory about evolution, which was it was a, evolution was a collaborative effort. You know, the very fact that we're here is because there was a kind of a collaborative effort, you know, across living life that kind of, you know, um, thought, hey, wouldn't it be cool to create, you know, like other things? And so we've got the novelty that we do in life. And, 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 you know, we need to continue to talk and we need to continue to acknowledge that people have got, you know, different beliefs and views and, and ways of, of thinking about what we do next. Um, you know, uh, and, and I actually really like the fact that, you know, we, we get this opportunity whereby, like, you know, maybe people watching this think that we're, we're all aligned or that we're all of the, the same thought you know like i i actually think that you know if if we were to you know do some sort of like test you know we're, it would come out that we're probably all kind of like incredibly diametrically opposed you know politically religiously ideologically yeah. politically, you know all of these sorts of things we need to we need to just continue to talk but that's the thing uh, i think uh when you when you uh, 
when you close off people to thinking and talk and discussion, you actually lose a lot. And I, I, I'm, I'm, I will meet and talk with anyone because I think we're so multifaceted as a human, a human society. And um, I mean, somewhere I'm, I'm more religious than I am actually atheist, right? And somewhere I'm more atheist than I'm religious. And it's kind of somewhere along the road I go, yeah, I think I'm okay with that one. No, I'm not okay with that one. And we, like we were talking about, if we get a question there, you'll find that we're so diverse in our thinking, yet we're willing to talk because friendship is more important than the diverse uh, vision we may have. And I think um, this is where a lot of people are because of that. The, you know, the shallow um, idea that, oh, you don't, you don't vote the same way as me, so I'm not going to talk to you. You have that in like in two party systems. Like you look at America's, Randall's are your pros along only just along political lines. I bro, I um, vote blue, I vote red. We can't talk. It's like uh, it's the same thing with yeah. Labour in New Zealand, uh, Labour and um, National in New Zealand, right? Um, being who I am, I will switch depending on what is good for the nation, and that'll always be my thing. What is good for the all the nation, because I, I don't just care about myself when it comes to our society in New Zealand. I care about every single person and what will be the outcome for that. Because I think, because of um, sitting in the middle, I've got to go, you know, some things cool, no, some things not cool. And I think, um, and like saying before, shelter. You know, if we don't have shelter, we lose out. And, and people on the streets living, and I have I've, I know people that used to live on the bridges and stuff like that. And I, and I see people living on the streets and um, carrying their bags around. And some of them do do that, and that's okay. I know people choose specific things in their life for themselves, but there are others that don't choose that and end up there. And how do we help those? It's my concern. And I think, um, you know, I think um, we, we, like you said, we need to discuss. And I, I watch people on, on my, uh, because I have so many uh, diverse friends, I hate that word. I have so many friends, right? <laughs> because, you're right, because we're, and, and one of them was like, was making jokes because he's a media and stuff. And I watched him, uh, befriended, uh, like defriended him, right? Got rid of him, unfriended him. And he's like, Dude, I was just saying what you were all thinking, but weren't willing to say it, you know, because you didn't want to be seen as an idiot or didn't think that people were thinking of you or so on. And it's like, and I was like, dude, thank you because I'm not going to be, I'm not going to unfriend you because I know you personally and you're, you're, you're a laugh. Not only that, but you're a very smart person when you actually sit down and talk to them. And that's, you know, when you actually sit down with people, you realize that they know more than you or that they actually might actually be thinking the same way you do on things. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes, you know, we, we sometimes we uh, think that we, you know, want to educate people or we you know we feel so passionate about the way that we look at the world um but certainly uh you know some of my best life experiences have been in talking to people that have a totally different outlook and um you know what i what i what I try and do, you know, and I don't always get it right. And, you know, sometimes I harass people because, you know, they think differently from me. But, um, you know, a lot of my best life learning experiences have been when I'm listening to someone and then I've gone like, wow, they look at the world yeah. totally different from what I do. And I'm going like, I'm just going to shut up right now. And like, yeah. let them do their stick, let them do their rant, let them do their rap. Um, and um, you know, I, I think we need to spend more time just just listening to other people's raps. 
and um, just, you know, like, even if you don't agree with it, like, you know, I, so many times I, I've listened to people and I've sat there and it's kind of like, almost kind of like I've sat there just going like, not, not saying a word, right, because I don't want to create a you know, yep. scene. And like, you know, maybe later that night or the next day or whatever I went, oh, and a lot of this comes, it comes back to the fact that you know often our own beliefs you know are so fragile they're yeah. they're so they're so permeable that you know when you realize that you know we know so little there's so much yet to learn about the world uh there's so many, like, you know, there's, I don't know what our count currently is, but, I, you know, there's another 7 billion people out there that are, like, you know, different from us that we're never, ever going to get to meet. We're never going to get to talk to. Um, uh, yet, and yet at the same time, you know, like, you know, the role of government is to kind of, try and keep some sort of form around, you know, all of these beautiful, wonderful, crazy people. Um, uh, and, you know, I, I think this is where, you know, this time that we've had has taught us so much. We've had so many amazing experiences. Um, and I, I'm, I, I, but I am deeply worried that you know we're not preparing for for yep. the next for the next thing facing us um and we can't do it alone you know i think one of the things if anything that we may have realized is that you know you can debate all you want about what's an essential service mm. but there's actually some you know we can make you the toss on what they are there are some essential services and we can't we can't survive alone we need each other um, yeah. and so thank you so much um for you know bringing us together in these really interesting um conversations and you know we've been talking for a while now so yeah, but, you know, well, hopefully uh, hopefully yeah. some people have you know stuck it in there with us yeah. <laughs> I didn't expect it to be two hours. I mean, like we, we've we talked about so many interesting things, and uh, and like you're right. Like I, I sometimes I sit at night going, yeah, uh, yeah. I think I should, yeah. I think, I, mm, yeah. I think I need to change my thought on that. All right. Or yeah, no. I think no. I think I, I, I'm good on that one. And that and that's how be and that's why I like like I like to a whole week and thinking you know about whenever you know sometimes when I do these discussions I uh, you know when we ha have these things I go away and I even when I topic on Facebook or whatever I go away and think about it for a week or two three days minimum before I respond to them um, because I like to have my brain think and a lot of time we so get into instant resp response and the instant response like technology, right? The other side down from technology is that dopamine that means that instant respond to whatever's going on. And and that is not healthy as a free thinking people because that's not helping us think philosoph philosophically and you say, sitting back and going, I'm just gonna listen for now. And I, that's the great thing about what we do here, is I'll just uh, while I'm doing it, I'll I'll, note, I'll take my note and I go. Yep, I'll ask a question later or I need to check now because what you guys say is important to me, but also somebody else listening would be finding it important. And even out of the two-hour period, there'll be something, some, hopefully somebody will go and go, yeah, I don't think about the air thing there. Maybe we need to really think about what's happening in our waterworks. And you're right, our waterworks, even here locally, isn't good in our creek. Yeah, 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 yeah really I've had discussions. Water. I've had discussions with waterworks people here about our creeks being polluted and feeding into, you know, into our, into our 
water, I mean, into the, into, uh, what is that, a waterfront there, anyway, you know, and that sort of coming off the hills and stuff, and, equi you know, farming and all that, and we really need to think um, about all those four factors you talked about, water, shelter, um, air, you know, food, and how do we, uh, you know, how does it all happen where we, we don't have to worry in the future pandemic? Um, so in finishing, uh, we've got five minutes. I'll let you guys do about two minutes each and we'll close off. Oh, well, I like the whole one tribe thing. I mean, if we're going to advance, we need to work together. I came on today um, unprepared. Like, I, I live that way. Like, I'm, I wing things. Um, I work in a bank, and so I do know some of the, you know, subject matter. Uh, although I don't find as much value in some of the, the finer details. Again, I only would add what I felt came up in the, the conversation. Um, I, yeah, I'm... I, I, like you said, learning, discussing. Again, I didn't expect to discuss so much for two hours. Um, I feel I've learned and being open to it and enjoying the conversation as well. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, I fully get this this vision. And I mean, I guess the only way to advance is to, you know, stop some of these things that are holding us back or making us have a more doubtful future. And now it's working together and caring about everybody, I guess. That's probably, I don't know if that's my two minutes, but <laughs> out. <laughs> oh, uh, you can carry on if you want, but that's that's fine. Would you like to carry on? Sorry, Rico. Um, no, I'm, I'm fine. Out. Thank you. I I the on the big screen freaks me out. <laughs> yeah, I, that's why I just switched you out. I just thought, mm, uh, yeah. Sorry about it, buddy. Um, all right, so, Captain. Uh, you know, we always end up having such interesting conversations. You know, we, we really are experiencing this thing in such a beautiful part of the world. Like, you know, if you had to be stuck anywhere in the world, you know, right now, you know, this is, you know, this is one of the places to be to be it's such a beautiful land it's very abundant um the people are beautiful um and you know it, i think if we can direct our energy around how we do all of this better and prepare for the next thing that might happen you know the next unexpected thing um, I think even just the project of, like, working on, like, how do we do this better next time? Like, you know, let's make this cooler. You know, let's make this more fun. You know, let's find a way whereby we we have a way of, like, locking down in Northland and, like, Northland has got a plan whereby, like, we can lock down but do it uniquely different from anybody else in the country, you know, that we can continue on. Um, uh, I think... You know, this has just been such a, uh, a really challenging time. It's very difficult for a lot of people. You know, I'm reminded of the fact that someone said to me is that we're not all in the same boat. This experience has been incredibly challenging and difficult for many people in ways that we could not ever imagine. Some people have, have lived through the horrible circumstances of being locked down with 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 people and in circumstances that you know we would not want anyone to experience um i think this is our opportunity to do this better for the next thing and th and you're right there on the horrible people to be locked down with um i have a close friend who um had is going through the situation right now and um and it's forced that person to be locked down with that person who they don't want to be locked down with and it's traumatic it's horrible and it's legal right it's legal for that person to be because that's what the government mandate is but they have to deal with it and uh 
and as traumatic as it is for them, they have to grin and bear it and deal with it. And um, this is the great thing about the place being in the middle is for me, is that I have so many different people, and different friends, and um, who, because, you know, I like to make friends with anybody and everybody, seeing that happen is very traumatic for me because I'm like, there's nothing I can do because legally that person is allowed to be there at this time. And, and there's the sad sides of all the greatness of happiness of being as a creative person in my own environment, in my own apartment, enjoying and doing all my thing, talking to you guys, talking to the world. But on the downside is having to know that someone is actually being affected that way. And I don't want to leave this on a sad note, but we have to understand that not everybody is having a pleasurable time, as you mentioned, Cap. Um, that while we all enjoying enjoyed our lockdown, even here's the thing that you can give a notice to someone and still have to handle another few weeks of it. And um, and I, that's the thing when it comes to obey the law. That OTL, I, I, I that's why in my brain, my body goes. Um, the law sometimes isn't working for someone in that situation, and um, you know it's not it's not the greatest thing when when you cannot remove that person out of your situation, and all they're doing is causing you mental pain continuously, and all could turn into physical pain. And I think um, I th the discussions we had, you know, I'm hoping that. We, because of we, we have diverse voices, and that's the greatness of New Zealand is having different voices, and the greatness of uh, you know um, different backgrounds, enjoyment, and sharing, and um, appreciating what we have, and that's the great, great thing. We, are, as you mentioned, we have a beautiful country. We do have beautiful people. We have. Uh, I just the brain in my head just went off with the with what we're you know, we're a great big melting pot, right? And but the other part of the melting pot is that it can't water on everything. The other side is that we can have little chunks of beautiful fruit and ve vegetables in there, and that soup, and enjoy each other's dif differentness and uh, and uh, amazing. Um, you know, ideas. One of the greatest things is ideas and opinions. And because if we we can always help each other out with different ideas and opinions, because we don't always think the same way, but that doesn't mean that I'm not thinking our way. Well, not only that, but we can hopefully, you know, come to a middle ground. Better than changing somebody's view, a middle ground. I think when you when you come to some ch trying to change somebody's view. It feels a bit like somebody's losing something, but if you come to the middle ground and go, you know, these are the four things, tenants of our society that we like, that we need water, uh, air, food, and shelter. Everybody needs that. And if we, like you said, if we can do that dumb thing and do that dumb thing well, we'll do great things for each other. And our country will be better for the next uh, thing that comes along. And I think um, that's a beautiful way, you know, of what you've said. It's like, it may seem dumb, but that's what we all need. The four tenets of our society as, as we, you know, as we live in New Zealand and uh, whatever country we live in. But I live in New Zealand. I love New Zealand. I call it home. And that's where we are, guys. Here in New Zealand, we... Um, Thank you to RTV, my guest, uh, my co-host, um, co and my other co-host who's been filling in for RTV uh, during the lockdown. And we've been enjoying amazing discussions with so many people in New Zealand and around the world. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please like, subscribe. And if you're watching us on Facebook, thank you. Because, hey, you're getting local people's ideas and thoughts and stuff. And... Guess what? We don't all agree, and that's okay. Because we don't have to all agree on the same thing every single time. Because that's the greatness of being 
you know, an individual is that you can just be different. And I think that's the goodness and the greatness of being a human is that we all come from different backgrounds and we'll go into different futures. But we can always agree on our four tenants. We need water, shelter, air, and food. Thank you, Jared. Thank you, Captain. Thank you, RTV. And yeah. we'll meet you. We'll catch up with you next time, guys. Kakete Ano from New Zealand. Yeah. Like, subscribe. See you next time.